Okay, thanks for your patience, guys. We'll um, we'll get started now. Um, we may have other people joining us, so um, but it's good to get started now and get things moving. Um, my name is Ian Justin. I'm a solutions architect with Second Gear, and I focus on the new line panels. Um, hopefully, we can give you a good idea of uh, a bit about more about the managing the deployment of these panels and the the NDM, the New Line Display Manager, or NDM Plus, as it's called. Um, not sure what not plus is, but more we'll go through, we'll get as we go through. There's a couple of things we're going to do so we're going to approach it a couple of ways. Um, first of all, we are recording this session, so we'll send this out to you after the session. The first session we'll kind of talk about just getting started with this because a lot of people have never really you know used this before. So we'll talk about getting started, how to register, how to get it set up, tour of the interface, some of the yeah, the, the, the regular features in here and how you can manage that. As we get further into it, we'll get into a few more fun things. Um Managing applications, managing permissions, uh, how we can using messaging through here, um, lots of stuff about remote control and things like that. So we'll kind of cover, we'll get a more sophisticated as we go through. Um, if you see something of interest, you know, make a note of it. Um, I'm <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot in here. Um, if it's something of interest, you're not necessarily going to pick it up here, even if you watch the recording. Make a note of it. And send me an email afterwards if you need detailed instructions. I'll give you detailed instructions. Um, I'll sit in a session with you and do it live, so we can actually walk through it piece by piece if that helps. So don't think you have to pick everything up here. We can follow up afterwards if there's something specific you want to pick up as well. Um, my email, uh, if you don't already have it, well, first of all, you can talk to your your second year account executive, but it's iJustin, I J U S T I N at secondgear.com, 2ndgear.com. So um, did I put it in there? Let me put it in the chat just so you have it as well, because it's always nice to have it there. Did I get it right? I did, look at that. So we'll send you that afterwards as well so you can get through this. So again, don't think you have to pick everything up. I mean, we're going to try and go through a fair number of things today. Again, if you're not sure, send me an email afterwards and I'll answer the questions afterwards. Um, I'll answer any questions you can put in the chat bot as well. So if there's any specific, I'll do my best to answer them as we go through as well. Um, so I am going to write this up as a manual, um, but I decided it was better to do this webinar first and then kind of write these things up afterwards. If you have a specific question about a specific topic we go through today, I'll write that up, that section up for, in the manual first and just send it to you live. Um, so. I'll also send a summary of it. If there's any interesting links I've got in here, just make a note and I'll send and you'll we'll, we'll send you the information afterwards. You have my email, you can send me specific questions afterwards. Um, worth mentioning a couple of things. We will primarily focus on single users. Um, I can talk about the um, multiple profiles inside here. But I mean, to be honest, I've spoken to Newline about this and they have not got a lot of these things, like for example, installing applications on multiple users. Um, if you have multiple profiles on here, they don't do that very well. Um, it is on their list, it is on their development list as, as something they want to do better. Um, but there are ways of doing it, but just understand we're going to focus a lot it's on single users. I mean, think of it, multiple profiles are on the panel. If you do use those are completely separate panels, essentially, if you think of it that way, that's the intent. So there's a bit of work they have to do there. So Newline is aware of that. Um, I also found a couple of things that don't work in here, and I'll tell you about those too. Um, and I'll put those as uh, enhancements to New Line. So things that I find that don't actually work and that in many cases New Line has confirmed as well. So <clears throat> if, uh, let's see in here. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so let's do the, the first thing first. Let's, you'll see me switching my views around quite a lot today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and, you, this may not always look perfect to you, but I'll switch these views around so that you can see uh, exactly how I set these things up. So, so first thing is about the new line device management tool itself. Um, I, keep, I keep wanting to say display management tool, but it's device management. NDM, that's what it is. Um, the It's free. It's included with your, with your panel. So once you've got your panels, it's free. Um, you worry about that. It covers most of the panels, NT, RS Plus, Q series, things like this. So you can get most of them in there. Well, the very early ones, no, it's probably not going to be able to do, but they're probably a little bit more out of date now anyway. Um, when you first get, uh, if you want to initially set up your account, um, the process is you register your account, you validate your email, and you enroll your panels. It sounds a bit odd, but First thing is register. So if you, you're going to go to this link here, and again, I send these links afterwards if you need it. Newline.glbth.com is where you're going to go to start. And if you haven't registered before, you go to register down here. 
the, your login or your username is admin at. Now mine is admin at second gear. That was easy to do, but it's not. Um, it's not your email, it's your login, which is slightly odd. But let's say you, you, you've got your, your school, you put that in. So this this last piece here, you can think of that as your domain. That's where you, that's where you log in. So it's always admin at whatever. Your email address is going to be your address. You set up a password, phone numbers, things like that. Where a lot of these things fall over is that when you first do that and you register, it's going to send you an email to validate uh, your, your login. And just so you know what it looks like, it's going to come from, it's going to be this one here. And it's going to come from, let's do this so you can see it, registration at glbth.com. Now that may go to your spam folder, which isn't very convenient. So just be aware that registration at glbth.com. So you may want to Check your spam folder, or have or have this uh, domain uh, set up uh, whitelisted if you if you don't have it done already, because th there's going to be emails coming from here. So you register your account. You have to activate your account. You click on that. If you don't do that, you can't get in. Uh, if you really struggle with it, you'll have to contact New Line. They'll be able to set they'll be able to set that up for you, or resend it, or something like that. So just be conscious of that first thing. So you're going to have to register, and you're going to have to validate. When you do that, you're going to log in. You don't change. Uh, so I'm admin. So I'll show you both have different users as well. And we're going to go in a second gear. So I'll log in as admin at secondgear.com. This first thing, this first thing here is, is the overall process. Now, one thing I should probably mention is you may see an email that comes in when you start to enroll your panels about credits. I'm going to talk about that later. So if I, I don't want to, I want to touch it now. So if you if you want to, if you have that as a burning question, I'll talk about credits later. So when you first log in, there's going to be no devices in here. What you're going to do is you have to enroll your panels. And that's the one time you actually walk across to your panel. And the way you do that is you're going to go up to your panel. You're going to go to apps. You're going to scroll down until you find a really well, insignificant application, which I always miss, called New Line Display. Now, it says New Line Display because it's actually um, truncated. But it's New, New Line Display Management Plus. It's an app. My, mine is already enrolled. What you're going to see is going to say, what is your domain? Mine is second gear. Yours will be school 101 or whatever you do. Whatever you put in after that admin is what you put in there. It's conceivable that you will be asked for a pin code. I'll show you where that comes up as well when you pair devices because you could have that. So you have to, this is the one time when you have to walk up to the panel. So again, what you're going to do is go to apps on the panel. You're going to go and find new line display, display because the rest is not there. Open that up and you're going to see the option to enter your domain, which in my case is second gear. In your case is whatever you put after that. And then it's actually going to, may, may, it may ask you for a PIN number. If you have a set of a PIN number, it's not going to ask you for one. If you have, you'll know what it is. But I'll show you where it resides. When you do that, your panel is going to appear. Uh, let's go here, back here. Your panel is going to appear here. I've got three devices connected to mine. So Again, okay, that's, that's where it's going to appear first up when you go into this. Um, if I look around this interface, I've got three devices here. These, This is my telemetry. This is just the big picture of all this. So I've three connected devices, what commands I've sent. You'll see that later. My most used applications, my whiteboard, go figure. OS distribution, not terribly helpful. It's going to be Android. So it's going to be 100% because that's the only OS we have on these panels. Um, the underlying technology here is called Radix, R-A-D-I-X. Um, and that is why it has different things like OS distribution, because it could be people with different panels. So a few dis few of the different um, uh, resellers and panel manufacturers and device manufacturers use, use the same tool and just white label it to themselves. Um, when you enroll your first panel, when you do that process I said, you enroll your first panel, you will get an email. And I'm only showing this because it may be a little confusing for you. Uh, I'm showing it so you can ignore it. Uh, Let's see. Here you go. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find an example in here. Here's an example email. New line device management credit balance. You go. What in heaven's name is that? So, when you use this tool normally, um, people pay for it. When you use it with New Line, it's included in your account. So you'll see a thing when you first go in. It says, "Thank you for adding 1,095 credits." Oh, what did I? What did I do? 1,095 divided by 365 is three. So this is three years of credits. That's the way it's done by default. You can safely ignore this email. So don't worry about it. It's actually sent to people who are paying for credits. You're, you're getting it for free, so they're being added automatically as part of your panel. 
And if you ever come up here to admin up here, I can see billing and I can see all my things and all the credits I've got, and the panels I've enrolled and things like that. Again, not something you're going to need to worry about. And I show you it so you don't worry about it, I guess is my point. Um, so, anyway, so you enroll your panels. When you enroll your panels, they're going to appear here. I'm not here. So let's go through, we'll go through the front interface and then we'll kind of get deeper and deeper, deeper into things as we go through. So there's my panels. Top one here is the dashboard. Everything about my panels is actually showing my panel where it is. The location is based around the IP address. It's going to be as accurate as the closest uh, device. My devices, these are my three devices I've got in here. A um, couple of things you might want to do. You can see here, you can edit the device name, second gear QCRS Canada, second gear RS Plus Canada. That's actually on the back of the panel I'm using. I've got two panel, two boards attached to this panel. Um, this list of devices, a couple of things that are mentioned about this. Don't leave this, the default for this, if you look at these, this rather unassuming little columns thing here, if I tap on that, I can choose what's shown here. Now, operating system is not terribly useful. I don't need that taking up space. So you can see when I toggle this on and off, I can toggle off operating system. Hardware ID is useful, name is useful. Uh, down here, I've got the Wi-Fi it's connected to, so I can see this one's connected to my current network. That's connected actually to my previous home, which isn't terribly helpful. I can look at the model number, so I can turn on the model. This is a, so you can see it's a Q series on RS Plus and things like that if you wanted to. Um, I've got the serial number, which is very helpful. So it's good to have the serial number. And then here as well, if I wanted to, I could also have, for example, the firmware version of this one. So just be conscious that you can actually switch this around so you get useful information as opposed to stuff which you don't really need. So that's my list of the list of my devices. Um, next one down in here is commands. Not terribly helpful. Just tells me the commands I've sent there. We're going to do loads of those later, so don't worry about that. Users is the next one down here. I've added a new user. Why would you add a new user? So you add a new user by going to users and clicking this plus sign here. Again, as I've spoken to people before, if there's anything you want to go deep, write it down, make a note, say, remind me how to make users again. You're going to send me email afterwards and I'm going to tell you this in detail or we can sit down and do it together. But if I had a new user, I can make a new user in here. You need an email address and so on. What's nice about this is if I tap on this user here is you can set the permissions for this user. So as an admin, I can do everything, but my uh, my other user can you do telemetry, they can do remote control, help me with support, and they can install and manage packages. So you see, I can, I've just given them minimal access to this. And just to show you how that works, that's EMP Justin at Gmail is that one. If I'm logged in as me, I've got my panel here and I've got, if I go into one of my panels, I've got all these controls on the side. I've got, uh, if I select my panel, one of my panels, I've got all these things across the top I can do. If I log out as me, and hopefully I get my passwords right for this one. And this time I come in as, instead of admin at second gear, I come in as, please remember, there you go, EMP Justin at second gear. That's the lower level user. Now, a couple of things. Um, if I actually, first of all, I don't see, there's less icons down here. If I go to my devices, I tap on a device, I only see a couple of options here. So I can remote into the panel and I can do things with the, I can install packages and things like that. So I've given very limited access to this particular user, which means I can pass some of the day-to-day -day management or support tasks off to somebody and they can't remove panels and delete panels and delete users and all their terrible things. So that's what you do with those additional users. Let me log back out again. Oh, by the way, let me just do that. Across the top as well, if I select a panel, you'll see that I can install packages and it looks like I can do some workflow stuff, but I can only do the workflow stuff that relates to me installing packages. If I say um, tornado one, let's see if I can do this. I'm actually, I don't want to ask if I do, it's gonna be noisy. Uh, I'll try to find something, sports scores. If I do this, it says fail to send workflow. You don't have access to those commands. So there are certain workflows I have access to related to apps and certain workflows I don't have access to. So depending on what you do when you set up that user, that kind of limited access user, if you want a better way of putting it, you can actually give them rights to do only certain things on, on your panel. And if I do this for me, I can do, when I select a panel, I have access to all of these things. Okay, so that's the user. It's quite a useful, uh, quite a useful little trick in there. Let's go down through this. Um, other things down here, repositories. These are uh, repositories that might be packages you're going to install, but there's also one down here, which is assets. So here I go, I've got a tornado siren. I've got a picture of a tornado warning. I've got happy birthday MP34. I've got funky music. 
Um, and each of, and you'll see me use these later as we go through, but you'll see that what I've done is to load videos, load videos and, and, and uh, sorry, assets into here, so I can use these assets later on. So that's what that repository does. So there's lots of repositories, um, advanced messaging we're gonna use, I've got workflows, I've got triggers and things. So that's what this one does. Bottom one's quite useful. There's only a couple of things relevant on this. Very top one, require users permission for remote control. So this is all the way at the bottom under settings down here. If I say yes, you you have to have permission for remote control. If I try to take remote control, and I'll do it now just so you can see the principle. If I take remote control of this panel, now let's switch it around so you can see the panel. You'll see on the panel on the left, it says remote control. Somebody wants to take remote control. I have to allow before I've got access to for remote control on that panel. So now I have access to the panel. They get remote control. Let me just uh, make it bigger, make the four there. Now, oops, sorry, hang on. I've got windows everywhere now, so I can find the right one. Uh, there you go. So I have access to it. If I don't, um, if I unch if I, and that means I have to have permission each time to do it. If I don't do that, mm. as soon as I take remote control, I can take remote control, which is quite useful if you want to do it when people aren't there or freak people out by taking remote control during Halloween and drawing on their whiteboard, just for fun. Um, so that's the remote control. The other one, which is relevant on that account settings at the bottom, all the way to the bottom, you don't have to have a device pairing code, but if you do have this code, that will be used if you want to. For example, um, when you remember, said so there might be a pin code it's asking for when you first log in with your panel, that's what you'll have to enter there. So that's just be, be conscious of that. If you haven't, if you haven't done it, you won't even, it won't be a problem, but you can have a device pairing code down here if you want to turn that on. Okay, so that's enough about that's that's the front end the front end interface of this thing. Let's go here. You can, if you want to, um, set up groups in here as well. So here's my devices here. There's groups here. So what does groups do? Well, I can set tags on these devices. Can people come in? I can set tags on these devices. The way you do that, for example, if I go to the right right menu here, I say for that device, I'll go down and find tags. I've got a second gear in Canada. If I go to this one, I've got a second gear in Canada, but if I go to this one here and look at the tags for that one, that one has just got demo because it's one of my demo panels. Under groups, I can set groups. So if I say just show me Canada panels, only those two appear. If I say show me all panels, these appear. I could have one for demo. Now, I've only got three panels. If you had 100 panels, you can set it up by school, you can set it up by district, you can set it up by building, you can set it up by uh, model, RS Plus versus Q Series. That way you can very easily say, let me just show me the Canada panels, and it's just going to show you those. Much, very helpful if you want to have, you know, elementary school could be whatever you want it to be. But it's a nicer way of, you know, kind of managing all your panels, especially when you have lots of them. So the way you do that is you apply tags to this. So you click on here and you can say, I want to apply tags to this or to all of my panels because I can say all of these panels. I want to apply a tag to all of my panels by selecting them all. I'm not going to do that. And then once you've done that, you can say add a new group. The group could be demos. The the, uh, the tag will be I think I think I called it demo, didn't I? Demo. Got that right. And this one here, if I do demos, oh rats, I called it demos, not demo. That'll teach me. Yeah, demo, but so I capitalized, but you can set this up, so I should have capitalized that. But you can set this up so you can manage the panel. It's quite a useful trick. Once you get into it, just manage the panels that way. Um, let's go down and look at a few more things in here. Device information, then we've got commands down here, users, repositories, account settings. We've been through all of those. Let's go back to here and look at one of the devices. So I pick my, my first device here. Device information general at the top. This is just going to be the helpful information on that panel. You can do things like a speed test. One trick, by the way, if it looks a bit small or truncated, if you make things bigger, you get lots more. This, it doesn't necessarily shrink very well. We'll show you that a few times. You see it there a little bit better. But so that'll help me with that. Um, info on the device, very helpful. What Wi-Fi is it connected to? All of those things. CPU can be helpful if you're trying to work out what's a compatible application. Things that aren't relevant, properties, file system, storage, the stats, never used that. Never used that, sorry, I've never used that. 
Um, and then down here further, you've got things like the Wi-Fi, which might be helpful if you're trying to work out um, why, you know, why the Wi-Fi isn't working, things like that. One at the bottom, new line, very helpful. That is the configuration of this panel. So are the toolbars on? Uh, does it have power saving on? Uh, when does it clear the whiteboards? What, um, probably important down here, what is the firmware version? 1.1.86 in my case. Where you spend more of your time is when you go over to the apps here. So over here, we've got all my apps. So let's look at a couple of things with this. A couple of things you can manage from here. You can search through your apps here. One thing is nice is you can search. So get into, I got into the habit of searching instead of scrolling. Here's the CTB News app. Now let's say I'm on my panel and I have started the CTB News app. So we're going to talk about permissions and managing applications and blocking them and things like that. So I've started the CTB News app. It's running there. Somebody says I've got a problem. You can come over here and you can say, okay, stop the application on my panel. That's going to turn it off. Now, if I want to, I can say disable that application. If I disable it, I turn this on again, CTB is not appearing here. Remember, it's on the top list, it's not appearing. If I want to uninstall it completely, I can go over here and say, that's, that's caused nothing but trouble. Let's uninstall that application from there. It's going to go away. I've uninstalled it. So you can do all of that from here and just do, you know, manage your applications. And, and this is where you spend most of your time, just managing applications and things like that, getting rid of them, turning them on. We're going to do more um, about blocking applications and things like that and installing them as we go through this. Remote control, we showed you about remote control, what you can do with that. Uh, if you want to take remote control, I've got it set now. Remember, I turned off the permission thing so I can take remote control. It's just going to go straight in. A couple of tricks of remote control. Um, if you just click on something, it's going to open things up for you so you can do stuff. Home is back here. You've got this menu back here. If you want to scroll through something, Typically, when you do this, if I want to scroll through this, I'd use my mouse wheel. That doesn't work. Think of it as, you know, touch. So touch and scroll with your mouse and you'll be able to scroll through these things. Max wheel doesn't work. Kind of make logical when you think of it, but this is it's a touch panel. So touch with your mouse as if you were scrolling and touching with your finger. It's a lot easier. We're going to do more remote control as we go through, but that's remote control. Uh, next one down on here, hold the thought repositories, hold that thought, triggers and commands, hold that thought. We're going to touch on that more later. Quick one about send message. This is a little crude because we're going to do some more sophisticated messaging later, but let's do this. Uh, happy birthday. I'm going to always do positive things to see if we can. Mr. Lawrence, 25 years old again. So when I do this, yeah, I capitalize on it. I am type A enough to have to do that. As soon as I say confirm on that, you'll see on the left-hand side, happy birthday, Mr. Lawrence, 25 years old, is old again. It's not the most exciting way of sending up a message, so I'll show you some more fun ways to put music and things like that to it later as we go through. Now, of course, if you want to do that, all the panels, you can just select all the panels, do the same thing. Location, again, IP-based. I'm up here in Toronto, right beside Lake Ontario, so it's not far off. It actually gets the almost gets me, it just gets the opposite side of the building. So I recall last time I looked at it. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not bad actually. Um, locking the screen. Locking the screen does work from here. I'll show you where it doesn't work from later. But this is nice. Remotely, I can just say, you know, let's lock this panel. Do you want to do that? Yes, I want to lock it. Interesting thing about passwords. So you see the screen is locked now. So if I go up the screen and tap on it, can't, can't do anything. Press the icon to unlock it. Type in the default admin password. So the ad, whatever the password you use, your default admin password is, that's what it's going to be. If you say get password, it's going to say the password is 714779. Just so you can see, lock the screen. I tried to use 714779, incorrect password. So it does, that password doesn't work. So it's the default password for your, your, your device. And again, if you, you can lock it from here, if you were to unlock it, you can just unlock it again from there. So nice to be able to do that on the panel if you, if you need to. Siren, don't use that unless you really, really mean it. Do not push this button unless you mean it. I'm not gonna do it because the last time I did it, the cat went away for a long time. It is very loud. It does not respect the, quite rightly so, it does not respect the volume on the panel, which is the way it should be. Um, wipe, obviously, it makes sense. Um, I'll, we'll show you a few more of those. Power, restart, very helpful if you want to do that. One thing to remember with this, these are queued commands. So if I click restart whilst the panel is turned off, when you turn the panel on, it will immediately restart because it's a queued command. Um, so if you were to send a happy birthday message to the panel when it was off and then say restart, it would 
when you turn it on, it would display the happy birthday message and then restart itself. There's a logic to that. If you want to, for example, down here, if I go down to manage, then here I can do the firmware update. If the panel's turned off, I want it to do the firmware update when it gets turned on. So it's a queued command. It makes sense. Um, but just be conscious of that, that you are queuing these. Can be useful, can be quite confusing as well sometimes. So that's power, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Further down here, manage. A couple of things to note on here. Remove, that takes this panel out of this portal, my version of the portal, my NDN+. You might do that if you decide, if you'd moved it to another school and the other school manages it on their portal, you have to remove it from here before they can enroll it in theirs. So if you don't, when they try to enroll the panel, it will not let them because this panel already belongs to you. That way you, people can steal panels and reconfigure them without your permission. So you'd have to, re, you'd have to remove it from here um, to do that. Uh, tags, we've talked about tags in here. Uh, I'm not gonna change the agent password. You can reset this token. That token, the only time you'll need that is if you did a, a whole firmware update on the whole panel, essentially a factory reset, you'd have to reset that token to be able to do uh, remote control and things like that. So just that's the only time you really need that. Remove Google accounts. Looks great. Keep one account. I want to have. Doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I confirm this for new line. Doesn't work. I will, I'm reporting this as a bug. I've tried it. I cannot remove Google accounts this way. Maybe somebody's been successful, but I cannot do it. And neither could the people I spoke to at new line. So that's one I'm going to put in as a, as a bug, uh, as a, a fix, as a necessary fix. Manage users. We already did that. My spare user and firmware update. I know my panel's up to date, but I can update the firmware on that device. I probably should have checked that before I did it. Um, make sure I hadn't had new firmware update in the meantime. But um, that's how you can update the firmware. Other ways of doing these things. All this is just sitting there doing it on our panel, yeah, you know, on, on this one little panel. What we're going to do now is go through a few more things in detail. One of them is going to be updating the firmware. So I'll talk to this. This is stuff I'll send you details on if you need it, if you need it later. So if you need more details on this later, I will send you information on this because this, this is going to be a lot to remember. So don't remember it. Just send me information if you need to know. You can <coughs> manually update. Uh, so if you manually update on your panel, it's going to come up and say firmware, a firmware update is available. Would you like to do it? Yes, no. If you don't want them to do it, don't let them do it. You may say to your educators, don't do it. And they won't do it. Um, you can push it later, but that will work fine. You can update from the NDM Plus, which you saw at the bottom of the power thing, there is the op op option to update the firmware. Now, you can also do that, uh, instead of doing it just on um, a single panel like that, you can actually do it more broadly. And that's called, that's what, what's a, a device center or command. So let's say I want to update all my panels. I can select all my panels. Now in your case, you might have a hundred panels, you might have one. I think, I think that's coming, yeah, from my update. So under here, what I've done, there are workflows up here. One of my workflows is firmware update. Now, if I edit this, you'll see what it is. It says firmware update, and I've chosen a command. There's all these commands here. The one I've chosen, I never, I, I never find things on this, firmware update. So I've chosen that one. So what I did was I said, add a new thing, called it firmware update, found a command, and the command was firmware update. When I've done that, to update my firmware now on all my panels, I select all my panels, I click this, and I click apply. That will send the update to all of the panels in one go, or when they're turned on next, which we just discussed. So you can update manually if it says update available, go ahead. You can update from here. You can do a USB update. So, um, and, and this is sometimes you want to do it because you want to go to the panel, because, and the reason I say this, let me do a quick phrase here. To update from the NDM, the firmware on the panels must be 1.1.56 version of the firmware. Now, don't try to remember that. I can send it to you afterwards. That's to do it from the NDM. If it's earlier than that, you can't update from here. You have to go across and update it from a USB. To update from a USB, it has to be 1.1.26. Don't worry about it. I can send you the information if you need to know about it. Do it from USB. So what you do is you... Prepare your USB drive, you download the firmware onto there as a zip uh, at the root directory, power on the panel, plug in the USB drive to the front, and then it gets to be fun. So you plug in the USB drive to the front, and I'll show you something kind of, kind of slightly amusing. Uh, let's, do, let's do it from here. So you create this USB drive, and this is going to look a bit off, but I want to show it to you because you might forget it. You go, to ses you go to the settings here, and you come down to system. You go to advanced. No, you go back to system. About, and what, so I'll do it again, I did that a bit quickly. 
Let's build again from scratch. Let me show you again. I don't want to do it too quickly. You go to the cog up here for settings. You go all the way down to system. And you go about. Now you think, well, where do I update the firmware? Imagine the model there. You want to say hello. So I'm going to tap on the model thing. Hello. Comes up as update. <laughs> I don't know how many taps it is. It seems to be whether you do it very quickly. So if you tap it once, it won't work. And you go, that isn't working. If you go, like you're saying hello, then you can update the firmware. It will look to your USB drive and it will update it from the USB drive. Don't ask me why that works the way it does. It just does. It's one of those, it's one of those neat, quirky things to know. So if you need to know how to do that, I can send you the detailed instructions on how to do that, how you actually update from that. Uh, it's not it's not as complicated as it sounds. It is actually rather fun because um, you can tap on it and say hello when you want to wake it up. But that's how you can update. All of those methods of updating do not affect your users, do not affect the settings or anything like that. If you do a full firmware update, like a factory reset, that will wipe all the data from the panel. The other, these other methods will not. So update it manually by saying, yes, go ahead on the panel, update it from the, the, the NDM here, which is, again, you can do it. There's lots of places to do that. You just have to go and find firmware update and it'll do it. Again, we can show you that. If you need more, just keep, tell me, I'll give you the instructions. You can do it from a USB drive. Got full instructions on how to do that. You should really go to New Line to get that because they're going to give you the link to the latest firmware. They'll give you a link to a drive where you can download the latest firmware. Some people do that anyway, just do it from a drive when they install their panels. They just walk around with the drive, don't even try to connect to the network, put that in. It just updates the firmware before they do, do anything. So as long as you have that drive in your pocket, turn on your panel, do that, tap a few things and it'll update the firmware for you and you don't have to worry about connecting to a network or things like that. So some people find that just the fastest way to do it. And it's probably not a bad idea. So that's firmware. Managing permission, and I've gone quite quick, it's a lot to get through, so I want to make sure I get through it. Managing permissions from the apps. So there's a couple of ways you can manage uh, permissions on the app. If I go, uh, let's switch things around again, so you can see me. If I go to the panel, I go to settings. Down here, I go to apps. Under apps, I can go to each of these apps and I can say BBC News. Um, I can uninstall things, do whatever I want to do from there if I want to. If I go down, further on here to system and then I go to advanced. Now I am going to change my password from five six five four three two one after this session but I've got I'm in administrator mode. Security, lots of fun things you can do from here. One of them is gadgets lock. So if I tap on gadgets lock I can find the gadget or the gadget or app or whatever I want to lock. So I'm going to go to BBC News. I'm going to lock that one. Um, actually I'm not going to lock that one because I'm going to do another exercise with that later. Let's lock uh, Jamboard, Google Jamboard. I'm not sure why I want to do that, but I am. Now what happens is I go in here and I try and find Jamboard. Let's see if I don't, it's not, it's not, yep, it's not even there. So I can, I've just got uh, the Jamboard, the Google mogul, other Google Drive stuff is there. Jamboard's gone away. So that's one way of, of limiting access to applications. Um, I'm not back in here, sorry. Let me, let me pull Jamboard back just so you can see it wasn't just me. Um, we're going to, I'll show you more things you can do in here as well for securing down the panel, but security, gadgets lock. Nicely, what it does is it puts the ones that you've locked at the top, so you don't have to scroll through everything, which is a really nice idea. So I've unlocked that, so it should be back. A couple of things in here I'm going to do later, but we'll do, but USB lock in settings. Really helpful. Took me days to work out why my USB wouldn't work. When you set USB lock on, this lock, this USB drive at the front doesn't work. Took me ages to work out that one. So I've done it by accident. Settings lock will actually lock that settings thing in the corner um, because, because it's not easy to get that back. So if you ever do that and you need it, ask me, I'll tell you how to get it back. That puts a little lock on the cog in the corner. Which you might need to do. Installation lock. This is interesting. If I pick that and I go to the New Line App Store, <laughs> I deleted. <laughs> okay, this is the pleasant, this is the pleasant side of doing a demo and <laughs> testing things out beforehand. I may have limited access to New Line Apps. Let me see if I do this right. Yep, I limited access to New Line Apps. <laughs> Just see if I can get this right. In, in, in working on this beforehand, let me just see, guys. I see. I'm proud, proud of myself. What I've done is in showing you how you can limit access to applications, I think I've blocked the New Line App Store. Let me just see if I did that. Yeah. 
Um, it's going to make it fun if I did that. Let me just unblock this one if I can. Bear with me. That one there. For close. Disable news apps. Da -da -da -da. I may not be able to do that. I may have understood <laughs> in showing how these things work. I may have blocked one of the apps I need to do, but it's not a big deal. You know, let me unblock it. I can do this block list. Da -da. Uh, let's get rid of, remove those things. See if I've done this, I may have to, reach, have to restart my panel to do this. Let's see if I've managed to mess up my thing completely. Yeah, I think I did. It's not gonna let me find that. I'll restart the panel. I did a lot of testing on this before I came in. The thing is, with what I was saying with this, is that if you want to block access to certain applications in here, I just lock. Um, in here, if you want the box access to applications, when people try to pull that thing up, it's not going to allow them to go into it. If you do the this lock here, settings, this, sorry, gadgets lock here, not gadgets lock. This, uh, where is it here? Installation lock here. If you do the installation lock there and that's on, when people try to install an application, they'll get a message that's a security that they don't have no sort of secure rights to be able to do that. It's going to stop them doing that. That's one way of blocking access to applications on there. The other way to block access to people installing is actually from the New Line Display Manager, because this, you have to go to each board to do it. And they can install from the New Line Display Manager, and then it will give them a warning. If I go back into here, Let's go back into here. Look here, uh, go to workflow. I can actually enable or disable applications from here. So this allows me to enable, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, that's what I, let me just turn off. I did, let me access to my settings. Good, I got that. I did, settings lock, turn off. I don't wanna do that, that would be a bad example. Would be a bad example. So you can, if in here, you can block applications. So here, I've got a workflow that says disable news apps. The way you make a workflow, you say add new, come down here, add a command, disable apps. And when you do that, I've got some news apps in the settings, right? If I go into here and look, I've got BBC News and a bunch of other things on here, CNN, Fox, and things like that. If I say disable news apps, what I've done in this one is Disable news apps, and here if I edit it, you can see that I've added BBC News, New York Times, CNN, Fox, all of these things to that thing. If I were to do that, when I open this thing up, if I got this right, I don't do that one. New app apply. You can disable, you see BBC and CNN, everything has disappeared from here now. So what I've done is I've removed it completely from there. So you can just very simply remove those applications. Um, I created another one because I wanted to be able to do it easily. I duplicated the workflow and said, enable new apps. So I can turn off all the new snaps on all my panels with one click. Let's do that, all my new snaps appear again. So if you have a situation where you want to turn those things off, you can just turn those things off from there. Very, very easy to do. And it's nice because you can pick an application, put it in disable, select all of your panels in one go, disable that application in one go, or that whole suite of applications in one go. Um, yeah, nice way to do it. One thing I haven't been able successful, there's a thing called policies in here. So I'm telling you things that don't work as well. You can block apps from here, but one of the things, uh, let's go here. One of the things it allows you to do is on the web to select a block list. You can put URLs in there that we blocked. I have never been able to make that work. So if you put CNN and BBC and Fox or whatever it is, you put them in there. I've never made that work. I've tried different formats of URLs and so on. I've never been able to make that work. So just be conscious of, of that. Um, so things that do work, things that don't work. So that's those are one of the ways of, of managing the applications, managing app access to applications, so blocking policies, things like that. Let's go here. Get rid of all those. Now, installing applications. There's a couple of ways of installing applications. As you never was familiar with installing applications from the new line app store, unlike me, 
and just to limit access to it, which I'll deal with in a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to install an application from the new lot from the Google Play Store because we can do that from this app, this manager here. So here's the process to do that. I go to the Google Play Store. I'm going to look for something. Now we want things that are formatted for a tablet. This is a tablet essentially. I think it's a bit. It's a big tablet. So we're going to go to tablet and we're going to say, I'm going to install chess. So I'm going to search for chess. It was just, it's just me on the Google Play Store. The one I want is actually, that's a funny here. Uh, so, absolutely. Now, when you get to this, what's really nice is where it says device, that's my device. It knows what devices I've got associated with my account. So, I just, so instead of looking for everything, search for your thing and it's going to tell you applications that are compatible with your device. Very helpful. So again, process, look for chess. When it finds all the chess options, use this thing to set this one. I'll go back one so you can see it. Apps and games or chess, go to device and say, that's my device. But believe it or not, that's my device. You're gonna, it's going to be obvious which one it is. Um, but that's what's compatible. I want the World Chess Championship game. Copy the URL here. So just copy that URL. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my new line manager. And I'm going to put on this one here. So a couple of ways I can do this. I can actually click on it here and say repositories and actions and install packages. And I'm going to say I want a brand new package. The upload method is from the Play Store. Again, I've got this all written out if you need it. I paste the URL in that little space there and I say sync. Now this is turning it into an, an APK file. It's turning it into a package I can send. So to the process again, I went to here, I found the URL. I went back here, I said add a new one. I said package from the Play Store, put it in there and it's built me a package here now. I'll confirm that. So now I've got World Chess Championships. Now there's a couple of ways I can send that to my device. I can either select all of my devices if I want everybody to play chess and say install package, choose that one and apply it. I don't want to do that. I want to say just my pat one here, install package, World Chess Championships, apply. Now when you send the command, it's going to be purple initially. So green is sent, purple is pending, and then it'll go green when it's actually, well, red will say bad, which I don't want to happen. Red will give you a, an error, say it didn't work, but now it's pending. It's a reasonably big one, so it's going to take a couple of seconds to install that. So it's installing that now. So it's been a success. If I go over to my panel now, <laughs> I hit completely the wrong button. I'm going to cast the screen down here and I'll go uh, somewhere down here is going to be chess. It's going to sing a happy song, I think. Allow, it's first time I installed it. Agree. Login as a guest. Offline two player. 3D. I can play chess badly. So, see. So, that's, so that's installing an application from there. If the application doesn't appear, probably incompatible, which means it's incompatible with the version you have on your panel. Um, there are ways to find which version is compatible with that. Newline is amazing at doing that. They will give you that information. If you're not sure, it will send me a note as well. But that's how you get applications on from the website. Find the URL, make a packet, package and send it off to there. A couple of other things on here before I get into the final bit of fun bit. Um, you can, again, we talked about all these workflows and commands. These are the ones across the top that really matter. So if I, you have to select one of your devices for this to work. Device settings, here's where you can do things that happen on the panel itself. So I can, for example, set wallpaper. If you're not sure how to do these, go add new. And then down here, you'll see this couple of options. The ones you spend most of your time in is general. So here you can say uh, the screen configuration, I've got Disallow install from unknown sources, disallow install applications. So you can do these things so it doesn't allow you to do that. There's lots of things here. There's down here wallpaper, so I can send set device wallpaper. New line is very helpful at the bottom. Uh, turn alter power of power off and things like that. Turn out tell when to power off. Here's a good, good example. If I wanted to set all of my devices to power off on weekdays from at 9 p.m., I'd have to walk around to each device and say power off at 9 p.m. What I can do is I've got a thing here saying auto power off. I edit that and go down here. It says auto power off is enabled at 9 p.m. on these days. So how are you going to set that up? All I have to do to set that on all my panels is this device settings, auto power off, apply. 
that will be sent to all my panels. So you can do a lot just by creating these devices. So I've created a library. I've got lock the screen. By the way, lock the screen from you doesn't work. <laughs> what is it worth? Remember I said it works from the other one? Doesn't work from here. Um, it does work from uh, uh, the other side. Uh, for Dan who just joined us, we record, uh, who just joined us, we recorded the whole front of this. So um, you've missed quite a lot, but uh, we have recorded it. We'll send you the recording afterwards. So I've got things, no, no applications are allowed. Yes, you can install applications, turn off the toolbar. So if you look at, I'll go back to the view here. This is how easily these things work. There's my toolbars you see on there. If I go turn off toolbars and apply, you'll see my toolbars on the panel will turn off because I'm that kind of a person. I then duplicated it and said, turn on toolbars, apply on my tool, toolbars, turn off it, turn on again. So those, those device settings would be very useful. Policies, these are things where you can say block applications, block news apps. We saw that when we did that. Workflows are the ones I use most of the time. Um, enable news app, disable news app, update the firmware, remove Google accounts, does not work. I told you that. Um, but a few other things now. The way I end up using this is, is um, with some executable commands. Now, some of these will do, some will do some method, some of these and we'll do a few. Here's some examples of fun things you can do with workflows. The way you create a workflow is you say, add a workflow, give it a name, and then you can add commands down here. So for example, I've got a workflow here which says sports scores. What does that do? Well, if I edit it, I go to commands. The command I added was advanced messaging. So I added the command advanced messaging here. In that command, I said, I want you to put a picture of the sports scores on screen and play funky music when I send this to people. And it's going to go for 15 seconds. So I can say, sports scores to all my panels go. If you look at the panel, it's playing funky music. It only goes for 15 seconds, so you, just, you, you get past it. So now I'm displaying sports scores on all the panels. So that, and he said that was displayed on that whole panel. So that's one way of doing it. Now, oh, let's see, I'll be able to join him in the waiting room. Okay. So, so that's one thing you can do with workflows. Other thing workflows, but my more very positive way of doing it, if I go down here, I've got happy birthday. What does a happy birthday one do? Well, it, on here, go to advanced messaging again. It puts up a happy birthday image and it says text. The text for today is Mr. Lawrence, Patricia Orange and Simon Green and it plays happy birthday. So if I want to send happy birthday to all of my panels, I'd select all of my panels. Uh, where did it go? There, happy birthday, apply. Very easy to do. That's set for 15 seconds again. Here's a more, one well, it might be a more it's macabre, but, but this is a more practical way of doing it. I have a tornado warning. So, and if you noticed, remember my assets, I had, uh, I go to here, I'll, again, it's an advanced messaging one. Go into here and edit it. The image assets came from, remember that asset repository that was over here on the left? So I've got a tornado warning. I don't need to put text on the screen. I think it says it all. And I've got a siren, a bit dark. Now this one has no time. So it will go forever. So I had to create another one which says we're at an end. So I'll play both so you can see how it works. So there is a let's say there is a tornado warning. This would be the process. Select all of my panels. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to select one. I don't want to turn up a siren on other people's panels. I then go to workflow. I go to tornado warning and apply. I want to turn that off. This emergency is now over. So until I, because that one was a continuous one, it will keep going until I say this emergency is now over. So I've set that one so that I, it, it's quite noisy, but I think it's supposed to be quite noisy. But that's just an idea. Some of the things, the kind of interesting things you can do with, with, with advanced messaging here. A couple of things to finish up with, um, a couple of fun things with workflows. There, we had a question of, can you open websites on uh, on other computers? So this here, now this is an executable, so it's not as complicated as it sounds, but open the CBB's website. If I edit this, it's called a remote executable. So the command is a remote executable. You don't need to know anything about programming anything awful to do this. You just need to ask me and I'll send it to you. 
you just put am in there. That's the name of the command. Don't know why it's am. This is the information that comes with it. And all you do is you type that in, you don't put it, you paste that in, and then you put the website at the end of it. So you put this and you paste this and you put the website. What happens then is what I can do is I can say, open CBB's website, apply. It will launch the browser and launch that on my panel. So now it will launch me, take me to the CBB's website. Really simple thing to do. You can go now. If you have a sports scores, you could launch the sports scores page on your panel, on all the panels at the same time when people first come in in the morning. You can launch that. It's just will get displayed on the panel. Again, up to you. Another trick with that is you can, if you want to, do videos. So somebody asked me, can you put videos on them? So I've got one here. It does exactly the same thing. It says the command is AM. There's this piece of text that you don't care about. And I pasted a, UR, a YouTube URL in there. So what I can do is say, play Manamana on all the panels, go. Also got Manamana, whatever that means. Mm. So interesting way of doing just simple commands. If you ever need to know how to do these, we can absolutely do this and I can send those over to you. Final thing, which is kind of a neat trait that not everybody knows you can do on here, is a thing called a kiosk. A kiosk is a, uh, let's find it here, let's find it here, go over here. So you go to the right here of your panel, there's three dots, and one of them down here says kiosk. Now I've set up a kiosk. Now why would you want a kiosk? Well, let's say you wanted to leave this in the lobby of your school, and you wanted people to be able to use it, but not go and see your Google accounts and wreck things and do terrible things to your panel. This sets it up as a kiosk. A couple of tricks though. If I set this up as a kiosk, I'll, I'll just, I'll actually start it. I'll just say, go kiosk. Oh, I know you say what this kiosk does, by the way. When you do a kiosk, you can say, uh, what are the allowable applications? So I've allowed the whiteboard, Google Earth, Starfall, Visualizer, and Mathland. So this is the Visualizer is the document camera. I can say, start up. Uh, I say, start up automatically with whiteboard. So that'll be come on the screen first. And all I have to do to do this is say, apply that kiosk to my panel. I also change the background of the panel. So it starts up now with my panel started up the whiteboard, as you can see there. They can't, there's no point in them trying to sign into that. They won't do that. So now I can, they can play with this. If they say home, home is now my new, my new um, uh, wallpaper. And the only things they have access to are these here. So they can go to Google Earth. They can play with Google Earth and things like that. So they can use that and you can actually have the panel. And now it's completely safe. One neat trick, let me, when, when, you, when you do this, by the way, it always gives you the option to, you go to kiosk, you also have the option to remove that existing kiosk. The reason I'm doing that quickly is because they still have access to the little button down here, which brings up the quick settings. You can't turn that off. So one, here's the trick. So go into here, go to toolbar, turn off the quick settings pant bar there, um, go back home, Apply the kiosk. I'll, I'll change the kiosk so that this time uh, it goes to the kiosk again. And I'll make it a bit simpler. So when I do the kiosk, I'll say uh, the allowable application. So by the way, you can also do settings. So I automatically turn off the toolbars. Unfortunately, you can't turn off the quick setting, the quick settings menu from there. So I put that in as an as a as an enhancement. If you don't see any of the buttons on here, one trick: make it full screen. You can see the plus signs and things appear there now because they don't appear otherwise. But now I've said start off with Google Earth because people have fun with Google Earth. And then uh, limited apps kiosk, apply that to my panel. So now my panel is going to do the same thing. It's going to start up. Google Earth is the thing that comes up first of all. So people can play with this and they can play with your panel. If they try to go and turn on that settings, that, that isn't there. There's no menus on the side. You can turn the volume up and down because that might be irritating otherwise. If they go home, it's just going to take me back here and then they can go and you can say, well, let's play with Mathland. So they can do that. Very noisy. But again, if you need to know how to set up a kiosk, it's a really nice way of selling the panels, letting people play with the panels, letting people, you know, come in and use the whiteboard without exposing anything whatsoever on your network or exposing anything whatsoever on your panels. So, <laughs> lots to get through right now. Um, there is a lot you can do with managing these things. Um, we're pretty good. Just let me turn off my kiosk. I'm like, why can't I turn? Why can't I see the time on my panel? It's because I haven't turned my kiosk off. And I, 
I can't do it because I've limited people's access to it deliberately. So the kiosk is a neat little thing, especially if you want to, you can use um, Sign Up Genius and have people sign up for parent-teacher interviews. They can't do anything else on the panel. It's a big, flat, you know, dumb panel. So we'll look at that. We're right on time. Perfect. Anything in here that you're not sure of, send me an email. I've written all these things down. I'm writing it up as a manual, so I'll send you that afterwards as well. We'll send you the recording. Um, if you have any questions about that, send me a question. How do we do this? How do you do that? Why doesn't this work? Or is there any way I can do this? And I've got a fair idea uh, of how to do them. Um, again, lots you can do with this with all these executable commands. Don't try and remember them. Send me a note and I'll send you the information. Um, just give, give you a good idea of how you can use this thing. It's actually really quite powerful on the back end when you do that, especially if you have 200 panels and you want to do something like that. That concludes this because my voice is going. So it must be getting close to the end. I hope it was useful for you. Um, you have my email, ijustin at secondgear.com. If you have a question, send me a note. If you want to, if there's any of these things you were interested in doing, send me a note. I'll send you the detailed explanation. If you want, of course, you have unlimited training to us. Just send me a note and we'll sit down and we'll go through how to set these things up, how to enroll your panels, how to set up workflows, how to set up happy messages, um, schedule messages so that every morning it comes up with the same message, says morning everyone and plays a happy sound, um, which might drive people crazy. So it's a bit Orwellian. Um, but anyway, so I you know, hope it's useful, guys. Uh, that concludes this session, and I'll send you uh, the information afterwards. I hope it's useful, guys. Take care.